Hey, welcome back to our series on uh, Facebook lead code questions. We're going to go through these as quickly as, quickly as we can over the next, I guess, only three remaining weeks. Um, and if I pass my next interview, we'll probably continue on for another four weeks, just with the way that uh, some interviews are scheduled. Um, so what we're going to do is come down here. We'll take a look. So yesterday we did our foursome question and we did remove nth node from end of list, which was a linked list question. And then here uh, today we're going to be tackling number 20 and 21. So valid parentheses and then merge two sorted lists. Uh, this is a linked list question and this is a uh, parentheses question. So uh, whenever we're talking about valid parentheses, it's usually a stack question, if I remember correctly. So let's go ahead and click on it. Let's jump in. Um, so valid parentheses given a string S containing just the characters parentheses uh let's see braces i think and then brackets i, I looked this up because uh, i started filming before and i forgot the names of i just call them you know round ones square ones and curly ones so yeah so we have uh parentheses braces and brackets okay determine if the input string is valid uh, an input string is valid if open brackets must be closed by the same type of bracket okay open brackets must be closed in the correct order okay every closed bracket has a corresponding open bracket of the same type all right so here this is true because we have an open parentheses and a closed parentheses this one's also true because we have an open parentheses closed parentheses open bracket closed bracket open brace close brace and then no these are these are braces these are brackets sorry i really i just hate coming up with these names and then uh here we have this one is incorrect because we have an open parentheses and a closed uh brace yeah that's a brace or maybe it's a bracket that's a brace i forget i need to memorize these before i talk about them in the future um yeah so Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to, this is going to be more of a, a stack question. So what we're going to do is be pushing open um, elements to the stack. And then if we come to a closing element, like a closing parentheses, closing bracket, closing brace, we'll pop it off and then make sure those two are matching. So in order to do that, we're going to be doing a similar thing that we did with... Um, finding the, the phone number is we're going to be creating like a conversion chart. So, so we'll go ahead and do this const, uh, conversion equals, and these are going to be, we want to make sure that this one has a, uh, value of this, um, this one has a value of, whoops this and our last one would be this one has a value of oops sorry this i just had my coffee so i'm still a little rusty i'll be picking up in about five minutes when the, the caffeine hits the bloodstream so this is our conversion chart so basically what i'm going to do is also create a stack so we'll say let stack equal uh empty array and every time we come across uh, this one and open we will be pushing um, to here uh, same thing with this one if we come across an open uh, curly we push it and if we come across a, an open square uh, bracket we'll push to here and then when we get to the closing ones we pop off so uh, this is a last in first out approach because you know we're making sure it is the most recent one is the match uh, we see if if we put that into our conversion chart if it has the same value as the current item we are on um so uh let me let me uh kind of explain it a bit more so basically our idea would we have a, we have our stack which would be this. So first up, we would push, um, for example, I'll take this one here. Uh, so first, we would come across uh, this opening one. So we would push an open one 
here. Then we come to this one here, the closing one. So we pop this one out, pop, we put it into the conversion chart and we get a closing one and this matches this one here. So we continue on. Um, same thing with this one. We push it, oops, we push it in and then we pop it out because we reach a closing one and we see that uh, when we look up it, this one here, we get this value here and we return uh, the same value so it is equal and then same on there. But uh, let's say, for example, we reach something like this. So uh, we push it into the stack. So that would be here. And then uh, when we reach a closing element, we say, uh-oh, let's see if this conversion is right. This conversion is equal to a closing square one, but it is not the same as this parentheses. So we would return false at that point. Um, it will make more sense as we code it up a bit. Um, I'm sorry if my, my ex explanation was not clear enough, but I tried to explain it in <laughs> the lowest level possible. Um, Cause I know if, if you have a question on this question, you're probably a beginner or relatively new, you may have a lot of experience with building uh, applications, but you know, this data, uh, data structures and algorithms are not really use day to day if, if you're not in a large company, because you know, stay lobby. Um, so let's go ahead and go through this. Um, so let's see. We'll say four const uh, element, got L of our string. So for each one of uh, these characters, we could just call them care. Why not? For each character of string, what we want to do is see if car equals a open one or car equals an open curly boy or car equals a open square boy. What we want to do is a uh, stack that push our character. And of course, not single equals, we want to be triple equals. So what we do is push this character to the stack. Else, what we want to do is say um, stack dot, uh, so if, our car does not equal, mm, actually let's do it, let's do this one. Const uh, complement equals our stack dot pop. So this will take the element off the stack and set it equal to this complement. And then what we want to say, if car does not equal our conversion at uh, complement, what we want to do is return false. So here, uh, if our car, our character at the position does not equal our conversion version of the complement, so our complement is the open and we get the closed as the conversion, what we do is return false. Uh, if it is true, if they, uh, if these two are equal, we just continue on because we don't know if it's false yet or true. And then, yeah, that's, we go through the entire loop that way. And then what we do down here is return true, but we can't just return true because there's a chance that there's too many open brackets, parentheses or braces in our stack. So what we want to say is return uh, stack dot length equals zero. So, if this stack is empty, it will return true. If there's an element in there, it will return false. So that takes care of the potential of having, um, I guess, a stack without a complement. So yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Um, 
cool. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and maybe we could test it out with this short one here. So this is the uh, test case we're using. This is our string. So what we do is we create a conversion chart, and then we initialize our empty stack. Um, in case you don't know, I use constant if I'm not changing uh, the element at all. And then I use let if I'm updating it. So let stack equal uh, an empty array. And then for here, we say for constant character of string. So our first character will be in open parentheses. So that meets the first one here. So then we push it to our stack. So now our new stack now has uh, this element on it. Okay. And then we continue. Then we get our second element. It is not equal to an open parentheses or an open brace or an open bracket. So we move down here. So then our complement is now equal to uh, this, uh, oops, this one, what am I doing? This one here. So we popped off our stack. So our stack is now empty. Our complement is now equal to this open parentheses. And then we say, is our closing bracket equal to the conversion of this complement? So we look up this element in our conversion chart and we get this value here a clothing parentheses so is this clothing parentheses equal to this closing uh, bracket it is not so we will return false and yeah pretty straightforward um, if you have any questions about this please put them below um, i will try and help you out uh, so let's go ahead run it please pass Please pass, please pass, please pass. It should pass. We do pass. Very good. And then we'll submit. Um, and we are, hey, 91.15. Not bad. And 81.32. Um, yeah, it's pretty easy to get the, the top percentage of these because, you know, the more experienced people tend to avoid the easy questions. Um, so I'm not really competing with the vast majority of people in, uh, you know, countries that focus on dominating leak code. So, so, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty great way of doing it. Uh, I think this is the most optimal solution. So of course our stack is this here. So our, um, Let's see, time and space. Space complexity would be O of N. Uh, o of N would be the worst case because it could just be all open elements. And then our time complexity, we're just going through it one time. So uh, this is O of one, this is O of one, and we're doing it in times, which is N is the number of elements in the string. So O of N, space complexity, uh, worst case, O of, uh, in time complexity, best case and worst case. Um, we could get down to just O of one if our stack, if it's just open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close the entire way. Uh, that is best case scenario, O of one, worst case scenario, O of N. But yeah, pretty cool. We're gonna move on to our next question. All right, woo, wonderful. Okay, so here we go. We have merging two lists. So we have function, List one and list two. So our predefined node is up here. This dot value, this dot val is equal to the value. This dot next is equal to the next element. So what we want to do is take a look at our question first. You are given the heads of two sorted linked lists, list one and list two. Merge these two lists into one sorted list. The list should be made of splicing together the nodes of the first two lists. Okay, this should be made by splicing the other nodes of the first two lists. Okay, pretty straightforward. Uh, return the head of the merged linked list. Okay, very cool. So uh, when I deal with linked list questions, um, I think it's best practice. Uh, I read about it a while ago. Um, but like I, I've done before is I like to create um, a, a new sentinel node. Sentinel equal new list node and uh, we don't know the value uh, well our value would be undefined uh, which would be zero and we don't know our next so this will be what would 
what we return at the end. So at the end down here, we will say return sentinel.next. So this will just return uh, the new sorted list that is attached to this element here. And then, uh, yeah, so we'll continue down here. And we will have some pointers. So let pointer one equal this one. Let pointer two equal list two. And yeah, so we'll come down here. And so I don't wanna like lose track of my head, but yeah, we, we probably don't need these, but I'm gonna do it just to be safe. Be safe. We could go back and optimize it a bit, um, but it's just O of one uh, space complexity. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, build this out. So. Uh, while pointer one and pointer two. Okay, so while pointer one and pointer two. So eventually we will reach null for both of these values. This one and this one. Um, so we'll do that and then if we reach null for both of them, we break out and then we return. Um, so first up, we'll say uh, another uh, if question, if pointer one and no pointer two. So basically if uh, we have pointer one is still valid, but we don't have a value, we have a null value here. All we need to do is just add uh, pointer one. And then, yeah, we'll be done. Uh, we'll say sentinel. Oh, we need a cur. Actually, we don't need this. We'll get rid of these. Why not? Let uh, cur equal sentinel. So here we'll say uh, cur dot next equals pointer one. And then what we do is return. Uh, we could break actually, just break. So we'll break out of this while loop. So uh, basically we'll just add the remaining elements of pointer one, which is actually, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it that way. Let pointer one equal list one and let pointer two equal list two. So the, this pointer is pointing to the head. This pointer is pointing to the head of list two. Um, I'm just gonna do this purely to make it easier for you to understand. Um, so here we go, while pointer one and pointer two. So while both of these, uh, while pointer one and pointer two. Oh, sorry, or pointer two, there we go. Uh, while we have value at pointer one or we have a value at pointer two, what we wanna do is go through these. So pointer one and no pointer two next is equal to pointer one and then we'd break. So that would just give us the rest of the elements in pointer one. Uh, else, else if uh, no pointer one and we have a pointer two, what we wanna say is uh, cur.next is equal to pointer two and then we break. And then here we'll say else. So in this case, we have both a pointer one and a pointer two. We have both of these have a valid node associated with it. What we want to do is see which value is larger. So first up, we'll say if uh, pointer one dot val, so the value there is greater than pointer two dot val. What we want to do is uh, we are increasing in order. So we'll say uh, cur dot next is equal to pointer two. And then we have to move pointer two ahead. So we'll say pointer two is equal to pointer two dot next. 
to move it ahead. And then what we also want to do is say cur is equal to cur.next. So cur.next is equal to pointer to that va value there. And then we move this one there. And then else, what we want to do is pretty much do the opposite where we move ahead with pointer one. Cur that next is equal to pointer one. Pointer one is equal to pointer one dot next. And then cur is equal to cur dot next. And then, yeah, we'll break out, we'll break out. And then down here, we return to the little dot next. Um, so let's go ahead. I'll, I'll walk you through our code real quick. So let's say we have uh, a one goes to a two which goes to a four. And then down here we have a one, which goes to a three, which goes to a four. And then here we'll have Sentinel. Sentinel. So uh, what we do is first we initialize our Sentinel, which is equal to an empty list node. Then we have our cur, which is uh, on our Sentinel right now. I'll put that here. We'll be right underneath it. And then we also have a P1. And we also have a P2. All right. So what we do is we have initialized our Sentinel. We have initialized our pointers to each of these list nodes. So of course, this is list one is list two. Um, so we'll say, wow, we have a pointer one or a pointer two. So both of these exist. All right. Uh, if pointer one, but not pointer two. Okay. That is not true. Uh, if po no pointer one and pointer two, that's also not true. What we want to do is say the value at pointer one, it is one. Is it greater than pointer two value? It is not greater than it is equal to it. So we'll come down here. We'll say cur dot next is equal to pointer one. So cur.next is now equal to this one here. Okay. And then we say pointer one is equal to pointer one dot next. So pointer one dot next is this one here. So this node is actually this node down here. And then we also say our cur is equal to cur.next. So we move our cur up here. All right. Next up, we go again. Uh, they both exist, so we move down here again. Uh, is two greater than one? Yes, it is. So our cur dot next is equal to pointer two. So our pointer two is pointing at this one here. So again, it is a one. And then we move up our pointer two here. And then we move up our cur here. And then we go through again. Uh, they both exist. Uh, so we say is two larger than three. It is not. So our cur dot next would be a two. Then we move up our pointer one. And then we move up our pointer, our cur pointer. They both exist again. Uh, then we say is four greater than three. It is. So then our next pointer would be this three. Because we're and then we move up pointer two. And then we move up our cur pointer to here. Then we compare these again. Is four greater than four? It is not greater than four. So we're going to be moving our one. So then we have four here. And then this is now null. This is now four. And then they, uh, both of them do not exist. So pointer one does not, uh, pointer one does not exist. So we move down here. Pointer one does not exist. And pointer two. So cur.next is equal to this four at pointer two. And then we break out. Um, so another way of looking at it, we'll go back in time a bit. So we'll get rid of this four and we'll drop back here just to go back in time, just to show you how this would work. Uh, then this so we compare again, we say, uh-oh, 
does not exist, but this four exists. So we are now pointing to a four. So this curve is oops now here. But because we are pointing at this four, we also get the elements it points to as well. So this would automatically go here and then we would break out and then we return sentinel.next. So we just return this one and all of the elements it points to. Our curve would still be at this four, uh, but there would still be elements attached to the end of that four that carried over from the list. So let's go ahead and run it. We pass, very good. Um, let's get rid of this. All right, let's submit. I feel like my run time and my space time, okay. A little bit better than average for runtime. And then our memory, uh, pretty much exactly average, 1%, 1.28% better than the average. Um, it would be interesting to see how these people did it. Uh, probably just modified, but great. Let's see. So wild point to one point two. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. All right. So here we go. Oh, we go Sentinel. Blah, blah, blah. So we are not creating um, a new list, actually. We're just changing what each element is pointing to. So this Sentinel is actually modifying these two lists and what they point to as well. Um, so be O of 1 for space complexity. This is O of 1, O of 1, O of 1. This would also be O of 1. And then O of N as well, where N is the sum of the number of nodes in list one and list two. So that'd be O of N. If, if you want to be crazy, you could say O of N plus M, where N is number of list one and M is in list two. But uh, I like to just say O of N, where N is the number of, the total number of nodes in both lists. Um, yeah, so hopefully my explanation with uh, <laughs> my pointers made sense to you. Uh, if you have any questions, again, post them below. Uh, I'll try my best to help you out. And uh, thank you so much. Keep studying, try hard, and hopefully we'll all make it in this industry. <laughs> Anyways, have a great day. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later.